Hello and welcome to this edition of The Current Report, our weekly roundup of what's happening in the world of digital media. I'm Damien Fowler. Well, now that Thanksgiving's passed in the US, we've officially crossed the threshold into the holiday season. And whether they were buying gifts or bargains, new phones or dishwashers, in the five-day shopping frenzy that followed the American holiday, shoppers spent a record $38 billion, up almost 8% year on year. So there's no doubt people are in the mood to shop. And while we're talking about the holiday shopping season of today, we're also pondering what the future holds as third-party cookies start disappearing next year. How are advertisers preparing for this change in the landscape? Which is why we're bringing in our reporter Zach Wang, who recently penned a story on the topic for The Current. Hey, Zach. Hey, Damien. Big picture, what could the future of holiday advertising look like? Well, I think we're, we're starting to see um, that taking shape this year. Data really is the big word here, first-party data, retail data, you know, all kinds of data. Recent research found that 69% um, of our marketers say they were planning to use first-party data in their holiday campaigns this year. Right? So that's, that's more than two-thirds, and that's a big number. Another topic that's played big in many people's minds uh, is inflation, and even going into this holiday season, some retailers weren't sure whether consumers would be spending, but inflation has been hovering around 3% for months. So off the back of that, how are consumers going back to a tried and true method of getting discounts? Well, I'll tell you, it's uh, loyalty programs, really. That's, uh, that's, a huge, uh, that's a huge thing right now for retailers, for consumers. Um, recent survey you know, found that 84% of shoppers um, surveyed, they, they reported getting discounts through retailers' um, loyalty programs this year. I mean, that's a staggering number, right? I mean, getting people to sign up for, for your program and obviously um, having access to, to, to that data as well for, for, you know, for retailers' retail data um, programs. I mean, that's, that's a really big win, honestly, for retailers and for shoppers, I would say. Um, an example is you've got uh, beauty retailer Ulta. They, uh, you know, reportedly they've already seen um, loyalty members drive ninety-five percent of sales. Again, that's that's an incredible number. So obviously, consumers are really responding well to this, and and it's really coming at the right time. Yeah, one of the trends I read about this holiday season is that consumers were very focused on finding deals and bargain hunting, and I know that that's typical for this period, but especially so this time around. So I guess those loyalty programs really leaned into that uh, that desire. When we talk about using data to make targeted ads, there's a, there's a new way of advertising emerging right on our TVs. Can you talk a little bit about that and what, what you found out? Yeah, that's a really exciting area too. Um, you know, we're talking about shoppable sort of TV ads, right, where, where you, maybe you're watching a show, um, you see some some really cool items, and you know people obviously wondering, oh, where, where can I get that? And, and now, well, you know, we're starting to see shows that that you know they they embed kind of links or or the, you know they direct you to pages where you can actually buy exactly what you see on the show. Um, I think recently there was uh, Below Deck Mediterranean being one of the bigger shows that started to have this um, this feature. I've just read today actually that Walmart um, is is doing their own show, a shoppable. Um, TV show, so um, you know retailers are getting into this. Um, obviously, big um, you know entertainment companies are, are finding opportunities here as well, um, and it's a growing market, right? So, Insider Intelligence uh, they forecasted that uh, U.S. shoppable media buyers will surpass 100 million um, in a couple of years, uh, and that's that's a big number, you know. So there's um, there's a lot of opportunity there, and and you know again we're, we're looking at you know retail data really kind of Coming, coming front and center, uh, you know, together with CTV, obviously there's huge growth there. Um, so, you know, again, data, yeah, data is, is the word. You know, it's an interesting development because traditionally TV was about brand awareness and here it is actually driving sales. And I guess that's what marketers mean when they say the funnel is collapsing. Yeah, yeah, you're seeing, um, you know, that, that old sort of, you know, dichotomy of, of brand and performance. I mean, that's that's being, yeah, like you said, kind of collapse here, right? It's, it's brand and performance and, and it's driving sales and awareness. And it's very interesting, very interesting. Now, Zach, you're in the UK and we're focused here on those shopping days after Thanksgiving. Does that shopping frenzy translate, you know, 
to London, to the UK, to Europe even? What, what are you seeing on that side of the pond? Well, I think it's quite similar in the way that uh, Black Friday has is, is become more like, you know, the whole month or, or you know, at least the first couple of weeks before that. Um, and obviously people love deals, but it's, it's becoming harder and harder to find true true Black Friday deals, I suppose. Uh, but, you know, at least from my, my own personal sort of anecdotal experience, there's a lot of a lot of people looking for deals. You know, shopping is still alive and kicking. So um, I'm sure you know it may not be the same kind of frenzy that over in the U.S., but it's definitely it's definitely um, alive and well. Well, Zach, thanks so much for those insights and uh, happy shopping. Yeah, thanks a lot. Bye. Next, here's our weekly roundup of what's making news across the internet. 18 countries have signed a sweeping agreement that aims to make AI secure by design. Reuters reports one senior US official described it as the first international agreement centered around artificial intelligence. The non-binding document includes data protections that aim to stop tampering as well as monitoring the systems to limit misuse. Still, it doesn't tackle issues around appropriate use of AI or how the data that feeds AI models is generated. Government officials across the world have been calling on stronger protections. And it seems like there's an exodus from X, the company formerly known as Twitter. The New York Times reports the company could lose as much as $75 million in ad revenue by the end of the year. According to the Times report, internal documents show that more than 100 brands, including Airbnb, Amazon, Coca-Cola and Microsoft, have halted or are considering pausing their ads on the social network. X responded in a statement that $11 million is at risk. Lou Pascalis, who has decades of experience managing brands, media plans, wrote an op-ed for The Current on what he's seeing at X. For more on his take, head to thecurrent.com to read the full story. And that's it for this edition of The Current Report. For a deeper dive on all of these stories and more, check out thecurrent.com. And of course, please like and subscribe on YouTube, leave us a review on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you listen. And if you want to hear more from The Current, listen to The Current Podcast, where we interview some of marketing's biggest leaders about their personal journeys and where the industry is heading next. We'll see you next week.